What up, everybody? This is your boy, Tech G, back with another video. And in this video, you are going to learn about the installation and configuration of laptop hardware and its components. Before we get started, due to the size of a laptop in comparison to that of a desktop computer, a laptop has an integrated display, keyboard, and network hardware. Laptops also use specialized or proprietary components for hard drives, optical drives, system boards, memory, CPUs, and other components. Replacing these devices involves much different procedures than on a desktop computer. So some general differences include component sources. These are replacement components such as displays, keyboard, wireless network cards, and system boards that are only available from the OEM or the original equipment manufacturer. These are known as OEM parts. Other components such as optical drives and hard drives, memory, and the CPU can be purchased from third-party sources, but differ greatly from their desktop counterparts. Next, we have power sources. A laptop is powered by an internal battery and an AC adapter that also charges the battery. As with other laptop components, the original vendor is the most typical source for replacements, although, some third party vendors may sell universal replacement AC adapters that also work. And then finally, you have components unique to laptops. So laptops include several components typically not included on desktop computers, including an antenna and the display that is connected to a mini PCIe card to provide wireless networking, a, key, a keyboard with an integrated touchpad or pointing stick a touchscreen or non-touchscreen display, and integrated speakers. These differences, along with the extensive use of plastics and the use of tiny screws, make servicing a laptop a major challenge, even for those who are experienced with servicing a desktop computer. So let's talk about laptop access. Now, here are several best practices you should use when you need to disassemble a laptop to get access to its internal hardware to either upgrade or replace defective components. First thing you need to do is refer to the manufacturer documentation. So documentation helps you properly identify screw types, screw lengths, and the number of screws. Remember some laptops, they could have more than a hundred screws in them. Uh, it helps you identify cable and component locations and other information needed. Most vendors offer this information online, but some manufacturers insist on doing repairs themselves and do not provide documentation for access to these computers. Next, you need to use appropriate hand tools for case disassembly and component removal. Using recommended tool types and sizes helps prevent problems such as damaging screw heads by using a screwdriver that is too large. Repair documentation typically lists the recommended tools for each procedure. Proceed with caution. If you break a part of the laptop, you won't be able to buy it locally, but you will usually have to order a replacement. Uh, next, we talk about document and label, labeling the cable and screw location. So laptops typically use a mixture of screw lengths and sometimes screw types. Mix them up and you could damage components or end up being unable to secure them properly. Take photos at different stages of the disassembly that will help to make the reassembly process flow efficiently. And finally, we need to organize these parts. So consider using a multiple compartments part tray with a lid for part sorting and storage or a magnetic dish that can also help prevent the loss of parts like you can see in the picture below. Now, if you need to replace the battery, the mass storage, which is the hard disk or the SSD or the SSHD or an optical drive, or if you need to replace the so dim RAM or wireless adapter on a typical laptop, you need to access these components from the bottom of the laptop. Understand some laptops use a single cover for all upgradable components rather than multiple covers. Some laptops require disassembly to access the hard disk drive or SSD mass storage. So you need to check your system documentation for details. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, so what I have right here is an old laptop. I believe I bought this back in like 2006, and I don't think I've used it since 2009. It's just been sitting around collecting dust, but I figure I'll use it for this little quick demonstration to kind of highlight some of the inside components of a laptop. So we're looking at the bottom of the laptop. As you can see, we have a whole bunch of screws that we need to unscrew here. Looks like I've already unscrewed some of the screws and lost the screws, but we're going to go through and unscrew these three screws right here. This is going to give us access to all the inside components of the laptop. All right. Keyboard. So if a laptop keyboard or its pointing device, i.e. the touchpad or the pointing stick, if that fails, you must replace the unit. A laptop with a touchpad has a keyboard that is separate from the touchpad, whereas a laptop with a pointing stick has a pointing stick that is integrated with the keyboard. Some laptops have both types of pointing devices. And as you can see in the pictures below, we have a laptop touchpad right here. And then we have the pointing stick right there. Let's talk about the hard disk storage, also known as HDD. So most laptop computers use one 2.5 inch storage drive that comes in one of three common choices. You got HDD, SSD, or SSHD. Each has strengths and weaknesses and each could be the right choice depending upon the scenario presented. So let's talk about the first one. You got the HDD, the hard disk drive. So these magnetic disks have been a standard option for years and combine low cost with large capacity. However, they are slower than the other options with magnetic disks and moving parts that can wear down. They are the least reliable of the three options. Next, we have the solid state drive or the SSD. SSD is a flash memory drive with no moving parts. It is much faster than an HHD or HDD, I should say, when booting and storing or retrieving data. Although SSDs currently cost more money than HDDs, their prices are dropping and their capacity is improving. Many newer laptops have M.2 expansion ports and can support an M.2 SSD card that is directly mounted to the circuit board for even faster reading. And then we have the solid state hybrid driver, the SSHD. An SSHD combines a solid state cache with magnetic capacity. It uses a memory manager to choose the most common files for the fast cache. And here is a comparison chart for you to glue your eyeballs to. So the thing you need to keep in mind is some Ultrabooks, they will use a 1.8 inch or a 2.5 inch SSD form factor, HHD or SSD. The larger 3.5 inch drive form factors using desktop drive enclosures or in desktop computers. Let's talk about memory. So here is a screen for you to glue your eyeballs to, to get re-familiar with RAM. Now, in case you missed my last class where I talked about IT fundamentals, I suggest you guys go back and revisit those videos to help you get familiar with a lot of the terms and concepts because those terms and concepts from IT fundamentals directly applies to the A plus curriculum. When it comes to RAM, we have obviously RAM, SD RAM, SDR, SDR RAM, and then a whole bunch of other acronyms up here to help you guys get thoroughly versed into the world of RAM, random access memory. So here are things to keep in mind before you select the right memory upgrade for a laptop. You need to keep in mind the form factor. So most laptops and service use DDR2, DDR3, or DDR4 SODEMs. You need to keep in mind the memory speed. If you plan to add a module, make sure it is the same speed as the existing module. If you plan to replace the modules, buy a match set of modules in the fastest speed supported by the system. And then you need to keep in mind the memory timing. The most common way to refer to memory timing is by its column address strobe or CAS value. If you install memory modules that use different CAS values, the laptop could become unstable and crash 
or lock up. How to determine the correct memory to use for a memory upgrade. You would use the interactive memory upgrade tools available from major third party memory vendor websites. These tools list the memory modules suitable for a particular laptop and some use an active X web control to detect the current currently installed memory. Crucial system scanner is a very useful tool for showing what's currently installed and what is compatible. And then you would also check the vendor's memory specifications. So you can determine part numbers by using this method, but this method is best if memory must be purchased from the laptop vendor rather than from a memory vendor. Now, generally laptops have two connectors for memory typically using small outline DIMMs or so DIMMs, which are reduced versions of a DIMM module. And as you can see on the picture here, we are looking at DIMMs versus so DIMM. So this is a DIMM right here because it's longer. So you got the so DIMM. This is what you will find inside of a laptop right here. And then you got another DIMM over here. Then you got this chart. It's going to give you some comparison notes that you may have to answer when it comes examination time. But remember, the two connectors you're working with is dim and so dim, dim and so dim. All right, guys. So here we are looking at the inside of this old laptop that I've had sitting around my house for like 10 years now. Um, right here, we have a standard hard disk drive. That's, that's uh, connected to this part right here to unscrew it or to take it out. I should say you want to screw the screw here and this screw here. You would just simply slide it out right here. We have our memory. This is a DDR3 or this is a SODIMM memory chip right here. Right here we have our wireless network chip. So basically this is what allows us to connect to the internet via Wi-Fi. As you can see, we got the black wire and the white wire right here. They connect directly to the chip right here. If you were to follow these wires all the way around, eventually these wires will make their way up to the to the laptop display and wrap around the frame of the laptop. Over here, we have our cooling fan. We have our heat sink right here. And then up under this is our main memory or our CPU chip which uh, kicks off a lot of heat that needs to be uh, expelled from the machine so that everything doesn't heat up and go berserk up in here, all right? I wanna show you guys how to take apart the actual hard drive. So like I said earlier, you got a screw right here and a screw right here. It may be different for your laptop, but this is what I'm working with over here. So I'm just gonna unscrew this. Matter of fact, let me get this one because this one has a magnetic tip to it. I don't wanna lose my screws. Uh-oh. All right, cool. So after I got the two screws up, I'm just gonna slightly lift this up and then I'm going to pull it out. Just like that right there. And this is our hard disk drive right here. Like I said, this laptop's about, uh, let me see, about 15 years old. So technology has changed, but the inside components are, you know, still pretty much the same for the most part. You will unscrew it and it plugs into this component right here. And so this is, like I said, this is pretty much all it is. It's just a hard disk drive. It's a 2.5 inch disk drive that is made to fit inside of a laptop. Put it back in. You just simply plug it back in. So you want to line up your little pins here and then you just push it in. Bam. Just like that. Take your screws and screw it back in. All right, next I'm going to show you how to take out the RAM here. So here is our RAM, our so dim RAM, our small outline dim, uh, dual inline memory module. So right here, you have these two little hooks or clips, however you want to call it. You're going to push them to the side, then the RAM chip is going to come up like this. So just take your fingers, slide these little hooks to the side over here. This is an old laptop, so I'm going to use this to assist me to get it all the way out. I don't plan on using this laptop anyway, so it doesn't matter. All right, so you see how it came up? And then you're just going to pop this bad boy out. Bam, just like that. And this is your RAM stick here. I only have one for this laptop. Like I say, this thing was made back in 2005. So now, as you notice with the RAM here, you got all your copper heads. And then you got your little key right here. When you insert this back in, you want to make sure that this key... This little notch right here is aligned with the notch that they have over here. You can properly seat the RAM. 
And once you get it there, it shouldn't be that complicated for you to push in. Just push it. Just push it. Push it real good. Do, 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 do. For some reason my pushing ain't working. Hold on. Let me give it, let me give it a little bit more pushing. Hold on. <laughs> there it is. You push it. You hear the little sounds. You push it down. Snaps back into place. So that is how you put, take the RAM in and out, ladies and gentlemen. All right, and finally, I want to show you, this is our wireless card over here. This is what allows for me to get some Wi-Fi. And it's pretty much the same process as popping the RAM out. You got your hooks right here. Just going to slide them bad boys to the side. I'm going to use this because, uh, like I say, I don't ever use this laptop. So it doesn't matter. This thing has been co collecting dust for years. I have no plans of ever using it. I know some of y'all are probably like, oh my goodness. Oh well. My stuff, baby. All right, anyways, it pops open. You pull it out. Same deal. You got your copper heads right here. You got your little notch or your key right here to let you know how to put this bad boy in. You got your black and your white wire that wraps all the way around to the uh to the frame, the uh the LCD frame. This is what allows for me to get some Wi-Fi access up in here on and popping. All right. So to put this back in, it's gonna be the same thing. We're just gonna slide it in, make sure my my little notch is lined up here, my little key is lined up. Push it in. I hear it, push it down, bam. For some reason my tape came off, but whatever. All right, my tape don't want to stay on there, but that's cool, Bean. So, anyways, ladies and gentlemen, this is essentially the inside components of a laptop. So, a smart card reader is a data input device that reads data from a card-shaped storage medium. Smart card readers are typically used on corporate laptops for access control, but do not confuse them with a flash memory card reader. Smart cards are usually plastic with an embedded chip to authorize a user for access. They are not common options for home use. We all should know what a smart card is. If you guys got a credit card, you probably got a little chip on it. That's pretty much what a smart card kind of looks like. Optical drives. Now, although these are not as common in modern laptops these days, some laptops will feature modular USB optical drives designed for being swapped out. So this right here really isn't common. This right here is common if you are still using CDs, of course. Mini PCI, a peripheral component interconnect or a PCI slot in a computer is a slot for plugging in add-on peripherals. This slot provides access to the motherboard for a device such as a Wi-Fi modem, a video graphics processing unit, or added storage with an M2 card. Many PCI Express or MPCIe cards perform functions similar to those on the PCIe card, but they are designed for the compact space of a laptop. The MPCIe slots in a laptop are used for plugging in wireless cards and also for M2 memory modules. Other examples of modules that can be plugged into the MPCIe slots are GPS units, cellular cards, and analog to digital converters or ADC cards. And here is a lovely picture of a mini PCIe card. Wireless card. A laptop with Wi-Fi or Bluetooth support typically uses either an MPCIe expansion card or an M2 card to provide wireless network support. The M2 card form factor, also called NGFF, stands for Next Generation Form Factor, is also used for SSD and other input-output devices. Note that an M2 card slot or SSD cannot be used for Wi-Fi or Bluetooth cards. Regardless of which wireless card a laptop uses, there are two antennas that lead from the Wi-Fi antennas built into the display panel that need to be connected to the card. Here is your card, and these are the antennas, the white wire and the black wire connecting directly to the card, ladies and gentlemen. Cellular cards. Some laptops require user connectivity no matter where they are in the field because cellular access is sometimes needed because Wi-Fi is not available 
Some business class laptops come with slots for cellular LTE wireless connectivity. Cell providers offer data only services for data access, but these plans are not set up for calling or messaging. Cell providers also offer service plans for external USB LTE modems to enable cellular on a laptop. It is best to start by consulting the manufacturer's documentation for the location of the slot for the SIM card. USB travel routers and wireless WAN card. So another option for traveling users is a mobile hotspot. Each cell provider has its own version of a hotspot and can add a hotspot with a data plan to the user's cell phone account. And that is a USB wireless internet card thingamajig hooked up to the laptop. Video card. So as stated earlier, the MPCIe slot in a laptop may be used for a video graphics processing unit or a GPU. Gaming users, they use these to enhance the GPUs on their gaming systems. And this is a laptop video GPU right here. Laptop screens. A computer display screen typically consists of a liquid crystal display or an LCD or an organic light emitting diode or an OLED display. And any communication peripherals are added separately. Laptop screens are specially designed to accommodate a webcam, microphone, Wi-Fi antennas, and often touchscreen digitizers and inverters. An LCD screen uses a backlight to illuminate light modulating liquid crystals. When an electric current passes through the crystals, they arrange into patterns that become the image on the screen. LCD screens are customized to different device types and some have Wi-Fi antennas attached. OLED screens are in many ways advanced compared to LED screens. They are brighter and use less energy, which means you're going to save on your battery usage and they are flexible and foldable, but the screens themselves are much thinner and more subject to cracking or breaking when dropped or mishandled. DC jack. The DC jack, which is also referred to as the power adapter port, receives DC power from the AC-DC power adapter and passes it to the battery. If the DC jack fails, the laptop's battery cannot be charged and the laptop cannot run on external power either. So this is the DC jack right here that plugs into the laptop. And then this over here is the AC DC adapter, which takes the electricity from the wall, converts it and lets you pump that thing straight into your battery, into your laptop. And speaking of batteries, a failing laptop battery can be a source of all kinds of problems for the user. Most manufacturers have diagnostic software that reports on the health of the battery and estimates how many cycles are left. It is best to be proactive in battery replacement. If you need to purchase a replacement battery for a laptop, you may consider a larger capacity battery if one is available for the model being repaired. And be sure to check which type of battery you are using when you're going through the uh, replacement process, because not all batteries are shaped the same, ladies and gentlemen. And a word of caution here. So you need to take precautions against ESD or electrostatic discharge when you charge the battery. Discharge any static electricity in your body by touching a metal object before you open the battery compartment and do not touch the contacts on the battery or the contacts in the battery compartments with your hands. Plastics and frames. So most laptops use plastic bezels, case covers, and frames, sometimes referred to collectively as just simply plastics and frames. These can be cracked during normal use or during replacement or upgrades to internal components. So please be careful with the frames. Speakers. If you have failed speakers, you can check for several possible problems before resorting to replacing them. Uh, things you should check before replacing the speakers include the obvious, such as volume settings and audio output settings and the not so obvious, such as the audio cable connections, audio driver updates and securing the seating on the sound card. And these are 
built-in speakers on what appears to be a MacBook right here. System board. So system boards typically come in a variety of shapes, which is dependent upon the design of the laptop. Laptop system boards are not easily replaceable, ladies and gentlemen. This is a laptop system board for I don't know what kind of computer. This area right here, the circular area is where the cooling fan is more than likely going to be placed inside of the laptop. CPU, so before replacing the CPU in a laptop, you must determine which models are supported by the installed motherboard. Laptop motherboards are customized for a narrow range of CPUs. A UEFI BIOS update might enable additional CPUs to be used successfully. This is a picture of a laptop CPU. The cooling fan. So the cooling fan in a laptop might be part of the heat sink or might be attached to the laptop's enclosure. If the cooling fan in the laptop fails, many components may be damaged or destroyed. So here is the cooling fan. This thing is the heat sink. Basically, it draws all the heat to it and pushes it to the cooling fan, which kicks it out of the computer so everything can stay cool and work like it is supposed to work, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so let's do some check on learning, ladies and gentlemen. Check on the learning. All right, so first question. Which type of jack do laptops use to charge their battery? Would it be AC jack? Would it be DC jack? Would it be LA jack? Or would it be NY jack? Which type of jack do laptops use to charge their battery? The correct answer is uh, DC jack or direct current. That is what actually charges the battery. It takes AC from the wall, runs it into the AC DC converter. That is normally the block that has the wires coming out of it with one end plugs into the wall and one end plugs into the laptop. It takes that AC power, converts it to DC, and then runs that bad boy into the computer so you can get you some, some good old battery life popping up in here. Next question. What option is the most common display technology used in laptop computers? Is it plasma? Is it e-ink? Is it LCD or is it OLED or OLED? What option is the most common display technology used in laptop computers? The correct answer is LCD. Liquid crystal display is the most common option that you will find out there. And the final question, due to a recent increase in cellular data usage, your employer has released a new policy that says company owned mobile devices are not to be connected to other mobile devices for the purposes of sharing the device's cellular data service. What feature is the policy referring to? Is it airdrop? Is it hotspot? Is it Wi-Fi splitting? Or is it NFC? So due to a recent increase in cellular data usage, your employer has released a new policy that says company-owned mobile devices are not to be connected to other mobile devices for the purposes of sharing the device's cellular data service. What are they talking about? They are talking about... Hot spots, ladies and gentlemen, they don't want you going around creating hot spots all over the place. Just getting all hot in the spot. They don't want you doing all that. All right. In summary, ladies and gentlemen, we have identified various components associated with your typical laptops that you will find out there on the market. And being that we have successfully did that, you are now a thousand times smarter than you were 10 minutes ago, ladies and gentlemen. So if you want to get even more smarter because you want to be like, hey, Tech G, how do I install all of this stuff? Go visit my website, Technology G, scroll to the top, hit the course notes button. And inside those course notes, you will become 20,000 times smarter than you were 
five minutes ago so that you can learn how to properly install all this stuff so you can be the man or the woman out on these streets, ladies and gentlemen. Now, with that being said, if you like what you heard, please drop a comment below so I can read your feels. Also, please hit the like, share, and subscribe buttons on your way out. And also visit the website Technology G for more information. And if you're going through this series, go subscribe to the playlist, the A plus playlist. If you're brand new here, go check out my IT fundamentals course, which is in the playlist section somewhere, wherever the heck the button is and make it do what it do, baby. But remember, technologyg.com is where it all goes down so we can make you all smarter out there. All right. Visit the website and until next video, peace.